Welcome to Offensive Embedded Exploitation, getting your hands dirty with IoT and Embedded Device Design. So the agenda, before we start with the talk, I would like to tell you that I'm conducting a training. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Omer and Mr. Joseph for allowing me to conduct a training with the DEF CON Red Team Village, which is on day one. So I uh, request you to, if you want, if you like this talk, if you want to attend this in more deeper manner, you can attend tomorrow's training. Okay, so let's start with the agenda of today's talk. Today we will first have an introduction to IoT, then we will do a preparing the arsenal that is a setting up our requirement, then we will have recon, then showtime that is a firmware analysis, then getting hands dirty, dynamic testing and lastly we will touch base upon fuzzing reverse engineering and expert development. Okay. So let me introduce myself. I am Kostup Padwad from India, uh, also known as Security Beast on Twitter. I have a dozens of exploit listed on uh, GitHub and CV details uh, with uh, on IoT. Also, I am a uh, I am a security researcher at Reliance Geo, uh, that is Geo Platform now uh, Geo Platform Limited, where we conduct uh, device security testing for all of the Geo uh, Geo Platform devices. Also, uh, I'm a Synac Red team member to keep myself updated and to solve the, uh, to hack into the toughest infrastructure. I, Synac is a great learning platform and also I do bug bounty there. And I like to share my knowledge. So I'm a speaker. I uh, speak at conferences. And now it's time to get started with the topic. So the, I have classified IoT in a Three, uh, three style. One is a uh, industry IoT, second a uh, human IoT, and third an uh, IoT for others. That is animal. So we'll see. I have classified here all the industry in uh, this image is taken from a uh, source is mentioned. Uh, here I have listed all the industries like manufacturing industry, smart government, uh, digital mobile network, mobility and Wi-Fi, smart digital uh, citizens. That is us. Then open data, health is a key element in IoT, then smart agriculture and smart building, smart transportation. So these things are getting smart with the help of IoT. Ma major like, uh, for example, a transportation industry, Tesla is building, a, a Tesla is the best example for IoT based car, right? Even for a logistic, IoT is getting used in very huge manner to track their shipments that to ensure the data uh, the packages which is, which is shipping should not get tampered they are uh, putting tamper detection uh, based on iot so it's like uh, simply if someone opens the door that means it is tampered and as the door is open uh, that small iot device will send to uh, generate an alert and send to the respective logistic person manufacturing industries are using iot to improve their uh, services or to improve their production product qualities so there should be a there is a should be a zero error product development we can say with the manufacturing industry and government like government should implement IOT uh, in my training I have a excellent example uh, which I covered there in my training so like let's assume that you, you every city have a street lights hundreds and thousands of street lights which is running from a night, uh, which is running whole night, right? So if you install one small IoT module of uh, let's say five dollar cost to that light, then it then the then that light will become smart and it will turn on only when the vehicle is passing through, and rest of the time it will stay in an ideal state, let's say power off state. So that five dollar module can save your five hundred dollar electricity bill for every month, right? So it makes sense is use, it makes sense of using IoT uh, in government uh, government covered areas or government entities. Mobility and Wi-Fi they are key provider for the IoT. As I said in uh, mobility, as government needs uh, or let's say if you want to create an IoT environment, so mobility is the best way. They provide us a NB IoT, narrowband IoT, and LTE IoT. So these two ways they can provide us uh, IoT connectivity to everywhere. Health is the key element. We are discussing this here. And agriculture, one of my friends have built 
IoT based water uh, water uh, water system to his farm. So like it detects a uh, soil dryness, it detects a uh, wind speed, it detects a uh, temperature, and accordingly uh, it turns on his water pump. So it will automatically gives water to the plants, uh, plants to his farm also. And smart building, uh, there is an excellent example in the next slide for smart building. And uh, transportation, as we just talk about Tesla. Now, in human IoT, so devices are getting inside the body. Like, for example, a pacemaker. Pacemaker is a medical device, medical IoT device. It's a it's a really critical device in uh, IoT aspect or in any aspect. And insulin pumps, and these are other devices which can be uh, which is currently using inside the body. There could be a more but uh, as of now i corrected this many now uh, you can tr you can uh, trigger so insulin shots to your loved ones remotely with this insulin pump you can check uh, if there is a if there is a uh, what we say abnormal behavior of heart uh, or uh, abnormal behavior inside the body these pacemakers are also smart. They can send send a data to doctor that uh, he, it is not behaving good. Or uh, you can, uh, as we know, pacemaker is a critical medical device. It controls your heartbeat. Now, why cow is here? Uh, so, IoTs, uh, animals are getting smarter. So, like if your pet lost direction then they then there are some patterns which they triggers every time if they feel like loss or uh, if they are not uh, if, if let's say you are not with your pet or a complete day and suddenly he developed a temporary fever then what so the some guys are working on the solution uh, which will be a kind of belt inside their body or uh, inside their neck tied to their neck and that uh, that belt will keep analyzing their behavior are they behaving normal are they feeling like loss uh, is their temperature is normal so that you can take appropriate care of your loved one pet and you can track your uh, animals also like your pet also sir. if they are lost or uh, if they are lost then you can track them so iot is a major part of our body iot is an emerging field and iot is too much powerful uh, than we imagine so with the great power, great responsibilities also come that we will discuss in a further se section. Now let's have a look of smart building. How we, one can implement uh, IoT as a in a smart building. Kimonjini,打开电视。Kimonjini,主人你说。我需要一瓶水。好的,服务员会尽快送来饮用水。机器人正在执行配送任务中,进入电梯。The self-checking machine, like the gas mobile check-in, like the rubber service and Kimonjini's uh, voice butler. The purpose of this kind of service and technology is to improve the efficiency of the service and the consistency of the service quality. As you can see, a smart building, uh, an, a brilliant example of smart building IoT uh, in action. So I would definitely like to go there and check in to test the services. So uh, with a great news, great responsibilities do come. So what I think is why IoT security assessment or why embedded devices security assessment is important. I have collected some hot news. Uh, this is IoT hot news where we can see of multiple threats and risks 
uh, that currently associated with IoT. The first and most important risk here, risk with the IoT in a medical field. So when I was a kid, uh, my uh, my grandparents used to tell us that there is a witchcraft and uh, there is a black magic kind of stuff which can remotely uh, which can remotely uh, kill someone. Okay, so I don't believe on that, but here you can see with IoT you can do it. Let's say if instead of giving 10 pump uh, 10 ml pump shot, if I trigger 100 ml pump shots then who can save you, right? Instead of setting your heart rate to the normal heart rate, if I set it to 3000 bits per second, you will uh, suffer from a major cardiac arrest, right? So, uh, as we can see, this uh, are inside the body and this are very critical devices. So, security assessment for this devices must be done in a very aggressive way. Like, uh, I believe that one, if such kind of devices are manufactured by a very renowned vendor, it should be tested countrywide. Like it should, uh, it should be offered to the expertise all across the globe, and then you can ensure that this product is secured or not. Uh, because everything have a different mindset to test everything, right? So same way. Uh, now you brought an IoT product that is a surveillance robot to secure your house and to take care of your loved ones when you are not in the home and hackers use that robot into for spying you here you can see hackers break into smart home play inappropriate music and communicate with a resident via camera it's a horrible thing it's a scary thing like if someone is continuously watching you and someone is talking with your speakers only how it will feel right it's it's scary super scary and this one, this attack was, uh, it is an industry grade attack. Someone discovered a uh, re remake of Mirai botnet. Uh, it was this OMG attack was discovered by Fortinet. It was a second Mirai. So Mirai is the biggest uh, attack, biggest IoT attack till now. Uh, you can read about it. It's a really interesting attack. This is again like you buy a surveillance system to watch your home and that surveillance system is watching uh, is watched by hackers so this device was running one video talk protocol which was sending the audio which was uh, recording the audio by mic and sending it to uh, the one who connects over video talk to the camera it is again scary right i believe there should be a, some system which will ensure that how this product is secure on scale of 10 so it will be a easy to judge whether we should buy it or not like like uh, like a product rating there should be a security security rating also should be there and this is the major threat fda recalls nearly half of million pacemakers over hacking fear this is a really critical issue so as you see the life uh, risk is associated with the risk of uh, with the iot devices so that's why the security assessment of such a product is uh, really crucial and really important it should be done uh, right now. Now my case study for this is can this decent looking IP phone change into a botnet? What do you think? Can you can turn this device into a botnet? Most of the guys will thinking how this can be possible. Or if there are experts who have already played with it may know the trick what I'm going to try. Right. Now uh, one day, one fine day I was thinking about oh, which device should I pick up for the training for DEF 110 and which device should I pick up for the brief also. So I was staring at IP phone and suddenly it comes in my mind that why not this IP phone only. As every corporate have IP phone, right? So let's say our our corporate is uh, one of the biggest large corporate. So we have at least 40,000 IP phone of same brand uh, inside our office. Uh, and Mumbai is a corporate hub. So I guess that there should be uh, more than crores of IP phone will be there in Mumbai of same brand. I'm not talking about multiple brands. Let's say if uh, vendor X is producing uh, X type of IP phone, that same type of IP phone you will find at least one crore IP phone in the city. And if you target a specific uh, like call center, uh, BPO and KPO, then they their business is IP phone, right? So if you target that, you will get lots and lots and lots of targets. 
so if you are able to remotely compromise one ip phone you can you are able to compromise a crores of ip phone at least same types of crores of ip phone uh, using uh, this technology so if you have hacked uh, two organizations having 50 50 ip 1000 ip phone each that will create a 1 lakh uh, that creates your 1 lakh bots maybe it could take 8 days 10 days 15 days but in within 15 days you will get a 1 lakh computers 1 lakh bots basically what ip phone is inside it's a arm machine or mips machine right so you may get 1 lakh 1 lakh bots in just 8 to 15 days now let's say if you target complete a city you may ended up with a 50 lakh ip phone right in in a city you will definitely get now let's say if you target a cities multiple cities then you can uh, let's say if you uh, india have four big corporate hub mumbai delhi chennai and bangalore so if you hack even those four cities four corporate hub and hyderabad also sorry so this five cities you may ended up with uh, at least 500 5 crores ip phone now let's assume if that 5 crore ip phone you are instructing those 5 crore ip phone to make a 10 request per second to the facebook.com so 5 into 10 is 50 50 crore request per second to the facebook you think how how long it can survive or let's say any big provider facebook google or for how long time it can hold uh, such a load even you can increase a 10 to 20 request per second that is around uh, 100 crore request per second right it's it could be a bigger stock and i am just talking about five cities of one country now let's say if you target a multiple country with the same attack you can create a biggest tbps attack in the history right so uh, i build a case study how can we make this possible uh but before that we need to set up our machine to test it uh <clears throat> most of the time when i give a talk to a conference or seminar or chapters like null chapters or somewhere they ask me uh, sir i want to start with iot but i don't have enough requirement machines so this is like you know you need nothing literally nothing to set up a basic setup for iot test here i shortlisted to get started kit what all you need is a linux why linux because linux is smooth with virtualization of arm and mips devices and all iot devices binary not all most of the binary work with the arm technology or mips technology so to smoothly virtualize it you need a linux secondly linux gives you lowest level access to the operating system so if you connect a device to usb port it will definitely give you something like manufacturer product id vendor id device type id something it will give it it won't tell you like a windows that unknown device right that's why linux and there are more reasons which we, uh, which we are uh, which you may <coughs> get in a training section this device is the jtag emulator so jtag is an interface which some devices don't have any interface no uart uh, no U- console cable no usb uh, no lan port no wan port so in that case what you should use to interact with device right our target is to get into the device that is our first target as a iot guy so in that case what you can do is you can use uh, jtag emulator to connect with the jtag ports of the device now you may say uh, why not no jtag in the device because it is this is not the case jtag is present in most of the devices because it is used for purely factory debugging process or factory qa process let's say device is in assembly line it get manufacture uh, it puts a required data and now before going to production device needs to run a qa so nobody is going to uh, check manually that uh, la- hundreds and lakhs and millions of devices with manually uh, checking one 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 pin right nah. no uh, what it do is it will gener- it will connect the jtag pins to the device and it will test all the functionality with their jtag testing suite so jtag is present you may 
not find the JTAG pins on the device, but you will find the points where you can solder the pins and you can connect a JTAGulator and identify the appropriate JTAG pins. Now, as the IoT comes in the mind, second thing comes is a wireless. IoT gives you a wireless freedom. So, like now the device, two sensor and one server is not connected over wire. These will be connected with the wireless technology. For example, uh, were Zigbee protocol, Z-Wave protocol. So, to test this kind of protocol, we need some specific hardware which will identify those frequencies. So, this API Mote is a gadget which can, uh, which allow you to perform a Zigbee testing, like Zigbee packet injection, Zigbee packet replay attack. So, you may see building lights, uh, these are controlled, uh, most of the lights are controlled by Zigbee. And connectors, finally, they seriously, they are light. Uh, you will, means without connector, you cannot test IoT. We need at least one extra LAN card. We need at least one WAN card. We need an additional Bluetooth adapter. We need one screwdriver set. We need a Skira because Skira is all-in-one connector. So instead of spending for uh, individual connectors, if you can spend, that's fine. But uh, instead of spending on this multiple, you can buy one Skira connector which supports GPIO communication, which supports JTAG communication, which supports UART uh, communication and also SPI communication. So if you buy this one product, uh, your all problem will get solved. And lastly, to hack the radio frequencies, we need an hack RF device. So this is the minimum thing you need to get started with the IoT testing. Okay. Now, <clears throat> This is a basic setup. Now, what about advanced setup? This. You can buy endless stuff. As new device will come, you need to buy something. As new, uh, as new device may have other way to communicate, you have to build your own PCB boards to communicate with that device. So, there was one device which is not directly connected over USB. So, there was a mediator chip in between. So, like you have to connect that device to that mediator chip. That mediator chip was converting those signals into UART and then UART to USB converter and that to laptop. So this was a complete set. So there is no limitation for advanced setup. You can build up to whatever you want. Now we are done with the hardware part. What about software? Which tools are required? Are those tools are expensive? Are those tools are paid? Are those tools are really too much heavy that one cannot afford? No, this is not the case. This I called as a weapons and these are the minimal weapon which are needed for testing. One is a binwalk. So binwalk is a great tool. You can do a firmware extraction. Binwalk is basically give a firmware to binwalk. Binwalk will extract you if there is a uh, uncompressed or uh, sorry unencrypted firmware. Okay. We need a firmadine. So firmadine is a collection of multiple tools. The firmadine consists of binwalk, qmu and postgres database and it's a uh, it's a properly man proper it's a properly organized framework for emulating the firmware okay so we need a firmadine to emulate a device firmware in case you don't have a device and if you have only the firmware and you want to test it burp suit i hope everyone is familiar with it burp suit is the great proxy tool we have and we need a python because most of the tasks we have to do it on repeated basis so to automate that stuff python is the great and easy to write language and lastly ida pro so if you can't afford ida pro it's okay you can buy ida community edition or uh, you can use some open source tools like radare or nsa ghidra also nsa ghidra is also a great tool to reverse engineer but trust me reverse engineering is the life in uh, reverse engineering is the life and reverse engineering is the most important aspects of device. So there are few things that uh, comes in the mind when we uh, when someone asks why you why you need to reverse engineer the binary hard coded backdoor account. Some devices recently when there is a news called on uh, I forgot the name of that router OS, but uh, that router OS as having a seven vulner seven major issues was recently identified, and most of it was a hard coded backdoor account. That to listening on a WAN interface. So let's say if your device is running a telnet on WAN interface, and if there is a backdoor account, you never know how how one can enter in your network. 
so this one this is one aspect second is identifying the critical vulnerabilities like uh, so remote code execution as in embedded device there is very limited space so you have to fit everything in that small space so application logic and application code is inside the web application binary only so once so to identify that binary the is a best way is to reverse engineer that binary and get assembly code out of it and uh, then perform a assembly analysis to identify where the well native vulnerable calls like uh, sprintf or system call f open p open kind of calls are in use okay so to reverse engineer we need a ida pro now uh, let's move towards once you have set up everything we can, we start with the first stage is always the recognition of pen testing right in iot also it's not exceptional it is first stage is recon i split this recon section into two part first active recon and second passive recon so uh, generally in pen testing we perform active recon first and then passive recon here we have to do reverse like first we have to identify we have to do a passive recon let's say if you got one device for example this headset and now the manufacturer of this headset is saying that this device does not support a wifi so how can you ensure it just because he said this doesn't support wifi you are going to believe that this doesn't support wifi no you have to read their specification so each device have one unix fcc id uh, and if you search that fcc id into the fcc id database it will come up with all the specification are exist with the device okay so sometimes vendor may lie to you that this functionality is not supported at hardware level and they can disable it like uh, this happens with me uh, with one product that uh, that vendor was saying sir this device doesn't support wifi and on fcc id device they have mentioned that this device supports wifi so we had a long debate and uh, lot uh, and lastly i ended up with uh, creating custom firmware which loads the wifi driver so basically they just disabled the wifi driver that's why wifi is not coming up of that device okay so first we have to do a fcc id analysis second documents you should ask for as much as possible documents so uh, like that document could be a security architecture document that document could be a product data sheet Uh, that document could be a project uh, description sheet uh, or could be a user manual of the product okay so these are the things that you should do first and then you should touch to the device and then once you touch to the device first thing is to know your device right so if i give you something like uh, you have to test this device what you to, what you will do like in web application we see what see what technology it is built on like lamp stack is there or what are the directories are in use what is the server so same way in device security testing or iot pen testing we have to identify the multiple entry points to the device for example a lan port in this device there is a lan port there is a console port uh, or there could be a wifi this ip phone might be using and some uh, some Come, like if device is running on android there could be a uh, there could be a adb running on it some advanced devices that i told you one about narrow band iot uh, they could be using an idd interface to communicate with a server no ip on network basically no ip data delivery network okay and uh, uh, then you can check for the uart if uart is present console port is present if android is there then adb is present if uh, classic ports are there then lan lan port is there console port is there so first thing is to know your device how can you interact with that device how can your linux your pen testing machine can interact with the device and once uh, once you uh, once you know that you can interact with device with specific way you should go through the documents So here are some glimpses that uh, will help you in identifying why document review is important. So here in this document, vendor is saying that this device support SIP version two and RTP. That means this device does not support SIP TLS, SIP TLS. So if someone is able to 
sit in the MIT M attack, he could able to hear your uh, hear your traffic, hear your call which was uh, which you had worked with. Here you can see this device support TR069. So most of the classic guys who is working on Windows, on Linux, on network pen testing are not familiar with the TR069. So TR069 is the protocol through which you can provision or reconfigure device completely using uh, ACS server. And here is a user. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here is a user manual. Uh, that user manual tells us that firmware of device is upgradable. Device have a password management. Device have a local and remote syslog. Device is having auto provisioning using TFTP, HTTP, and HTTPS, and also multi-user level. So, if uh, owner of device have changed the password from device at to admin admin to admin admin at one two three, still though it's available. Still, there could be a multiple users like support, like a tech, uh, this kind of user you may find uh, generally inside the product and their password will be same as the username. So this you can identify from the uh, manual itself. Now, this is one algorithms. Algorithms, uh, reviewing algorithms is one of the most critical part in IoT. You may be thinking what we have to do with an algorithm. So the practical example for this is let's say vendor X have decided to produce a routers. So as per the standard or minimal requirement, all routers Wi-Fi SSID should be unique or Wi-Fi SSID should be random or at least the password uh, to connect that SSID should be random. So how you think that for one crore devices, how you are going to do a password? You are going to write a C program for that? No, right. Or if, even if you write, so you, you you are going to maintain the unique password for every device with you? No, right. So what you are doing here is you are using one algorithm to generate a SSID password. So basically first four digits of your MAC address and last four digits of your uh, last four digits of your serial number plus current date and time could be a password for SSID. So uh, if you search for the uh, Belkin password generation hack, password generation algorithm hack, you may come up with a, uh, what you may get what I'm trying to say here. So if, if they design the poor algorithm just by adding first four digit of MAC address, last four digit of serial number, anyone can generate a password for any device, right? Or MAC address plus date on time. So like, uh, you know that if uh, vendor X is generating a password based on MAC address and date on time. So what you do is you set a, a packet capture. You capture a beacon. You get that uh, MAC address first four digit and you add a current uh, DDMM format and connect with the password to the SSID if, they, if the SSID is on default password, right? So to ensure that uh, they are not doing such a silly mistake, we have to review the algorithms. And lastly, the magic number. So what the magic number is? You know, you uh, you found some fault in your device. For example, set top box or for example, in, in any of your device, let's say router. You, uh, if uh, you are a non techie guy, you take that router. Uh, hey man, this router is not working. It's not showing up. You take that router to the uh, respective service center. That service center guy connects to the router and enter some to, 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 to code. And in 15 minutes, he will give you that, sir, it is working again. So how you think it is possible? So every device has some specific additional access mode that we call a, uh, what we call it, developer mode or a debugger mode or a engineer mode. So to access those modes, you need to enter some secret code, which is also generated by algorithm. So it calls a magic number generation algorithm. So you have to review it. Like uh, there was one USB which was supporting, uh, which is locked to support with specific ISPX for internet provide, uh, for internet providing. And let's, uh, then you want to unlock it and you want to use it over other network. So how you can do it? You access the engineering mode of that device. You remove that restriction, maybe a PLM unlock is there, maybe 
some mcc mnc code or uh, white listed inside that device or uh, or it could be a single uh, like uh, only name of isp is written there to latch on this network only if you find so you can easily modify it so to access this additional modes you need this magic number so magic number generation logic should be talked to identify like otherwise once this logic is leaked you are over now uh, this is the most interesting aspect of documentary a credentials to access the device here you can see funny part default pc pro port connection type is bridge okay that's fine default username for user mode is admin default uh, sorry for admin mode it's admin okay that's okay default username for user mode is user default password for web is null wow like they set up a complete web ui they set up a users they set up a password policies and now they are setting password to null that means all you need to do is you have to identify the ip address once you identify once you identify the ip address you type admin and you are admin you type a user and you are a user isn't it so funny <laughs> and here is the default web login port so they are giving you everything in their documents so you should review those document you should search for the uh, word like enc so if there is encryption logic it will pop up you should search for the word secu like secu so security related stuff is there it will pop up because sometimes user manual is of 400 to 500 pages to quickly review it uh, as if you are a device tester you may get a limited time of 5 to 10 days to complete one device uh, security assessment so in that case you need to uh, follow such kind of tricks now active recon of the device so active recon here is not just uh, identifying open port okay but when it comes to open port you should do a port scan of all port for device because they always use non standard port here is one device which i scanned this was the ip address of it on on 2017 i did scan on this device monday and i found this port was open 1380 after reversing that binary which was associated to this port i was able to perform a remote code execution on this device and this is a end user device so multiple users is having access so i could have execute a code on maybe a 70000 people in a city same way i discovered this crash on 4046 port so if i fired one command on random ip addresses so wherever it connects to 4046 those devices will get crash and i well, i could cause a disruptive din denial of service attack and this was also an interesting card uh, interesting crash i identified on 415654 after reversing that binary oh i forgot to hide this mac address that's okay so uh, this is active recon but if we don't stop here for recognition we have to identify what is the underlying os of this device so let's say you saw of one fine working android tv so you know that underlying os is android now what about ip phone what do you think ip phone is running ip phone most of the run uh, mostly all of this embedded device runs on a linux and they use busybox as a kernel and busybox to save the space because as i told you we have a very short space associated with it so to save space uh, we have uh, this embedded devices uses busybox and why busybox is false in a recon because busybox itself has some vulnerabilities so if you search a cv details for busybox you may end up with a vulnerability an underlying operating system will tell you what are the uh, vulnerabilities are associated with that operating system so basically uh, if say the device is using linux kernel of version 2 to uh, 2.10 to 2.15 then uh, in this five versions there could be lots of vulnerabilities which you can exploit later so identifying underlying operating system identifying a busybox version identifying all open ports tcp udp and uh, uh, apart from this what we can do uh, is like accessible locations like let's say console uh, if root console is running without password with the uart all you need is to connect one cable <laughs> using uart to usb converter okay so this is a active recon for embedded devices now 
uh, we, we will touch base some more uh, aspects of recon in our upcoming training okay now uh, <clears throat> the great part of device testing is uh, when you are uh, when you are testing device as a white box approach uh, you may uh, you may get with a firmware so there are uh, two types of firmware basically and uh, encrypted firmware compressed firmware uh, so oh sorry so agenda for this firmware analysis talk is to identify what is firmware obtaining firmware ways to obtain the firmware unpacking firmware and finding vulnerabilities inside the firmware so here the best part of device testing if you are doing a white box then you get a firmware so that will help you identifying the identifying the uh, directories or entry points or network services running on it using the firmware itself so you don't have to do just a brute force using fffuf or you don't have to do a content discovery in a very large way like you have to do perform analysis here not a content discovery so that section get really skipped from recon uh, and uh, here you if if the if this is a white box testing okay so what is the firmware firmware is the file which contains a file system of device a kernel for the device and a bootloader and this firmware are of two types one is a full firmware second is a delta firmware so let's say you are using a mobile like i am using a samsung mobile so you are using a samsung version uh, firmware version 1.1.1 uh, now uh, there was a issue when you open a, a dialer it gets crashed so this is a small issue maybe developer messed up somewhere now samsung want to send a update so do you think samsung is going to send you a 3 gb update for complete operating system for one small patch no what they will do is they perform uh, the respective changes at file system layer uh, if it's a file system level then that delta part they will calculate of uh, kbs and mbs and that will ship to your device so that is called a partial uh, update so that is a delta firmware and that firmware you receive over the air to your handset for update perspective okay uh, so this is a there are these are the types of firmware now uh, what are the ways to uh, obtain the firmware so here are a uh, few ways i listed down we are going to touch base on uh, more ways in a training so first is downloading from the website like here you can see the firmware is listed on their website you can click on download you will get a firmware complete firmware second is like you set up a bridge like this is your device uh, this is the lan card of your pc this is your additional lan card you set up a bridge connection and uh, this is your isp cable now on device end click on check for update if there is a firmware available start wireshark capture here on your bridge and click on download so what happened that capture will get stopped here uh, and you can uh, download the firmware from the update now extracting for a device i told you like some device don't have literally a, any uh, way to connect with a device so in that case you can connect a jtag and you can dump the firmware using jtag then google docs so like if you search index of or ftp of a product name you may come with a firmware and lastly analyzing device traffic so believe me some devices uh, most of the devices most of the devices which we use like smart watch or uh, a mobile phone gets a silent update so what that silent update is device is checking periodically whether the firmware is update firmware update is available uh, or not with a respective vendor so let's say it uh, on one fine night uh, device checks for the update now that update requires restart and device is restarted so i woke up with my phone and saying why this why my phone is restarted whether it as it was charged full how so these are the tricks that vendor push the firmware silently that is called silent update so you to obtain such kind of update you need to keep eye on uh, device traffic so basically you can set up one uh, interception server itself so that all the uh, device which are at your home are connected to that interception server and that server is downloading everything from uh, 
you you can have a track of all the things that is getting downloaded at your home okay now you got a firmware what now so everyone knows that bin walk happen you can extract the firmware no that is the most inappropriate approach to extract the firmware first thing you should do is an entropy analysis so some firmwares are compressed and some firmwares are encrypted so if you run a bin walk on encrypted firmware it will create a garbage it may literally fills your gbs and tbs of data with a garbage and you will get nothing so first way first proper way is to perform a entropy analysis uh, on firmware with bin walk hyphen capital e it will generate a graph like this as you can see here a line is completely on the one that means the firmware is very nicely encrypted but here you can see some part is here is not encrypted so now what now we can run a dd on this part and we can download this particular information uh, uh, to our device and we see what is there present so believe me i once i found a private key to decrypt that firmware in this part once i found a password so that is uh, that is a fun to identify the firmware entropy and with that password i was able to uh, open that firmware now to uh, sometimes uh, in hexdom only you will see the password of firmware i uh, i it happens to me and then you can perform a signature analysis so like if you are able to perform a signature analysis you may come up with the, with knowing which type of file system are in use so like in windows we have fat and tfs in linux we have ext ext1234 and razer fs and same way in device you may never find this fat and ext4 you will find operative file system like cram fs ubfs uh, squash fs squash fs is majorly i have seen till now and yz fs so these are the very small file systems are in use because due to the restriction of space okay now once you are able to extract the file system from the firmware now what to look inside it right we are going to touch base our details aspect of this in our tomorrow's training uh, but as of now uh, what are the most critical aspect that you should look first obviously a passwd file to get a credentials and uh, decode the, decode that hash to log in inside the device second you should look for the document room so what are the web pages are there some hidden pages which is not listed in gui uh, the those hidden pages may use to access a uh, device core functionality or execute a root level command then uh, as i told you in uh, this application binary and the docu application logic is built inside the web binary so that binary should be downloaded uh, and I, I, and reverse engineer for the purpose of identifying vulnerability and lastly this is the first command which i run on firmware find slash name dot sh with the uh, type of file and having permission triple seven so uh, this is the most important aspect as uh, you can see there are cron jobs running with a root a root and that was a shell script and it was having a permission of triple seven what you want you are root now you can edit that shell script put add user command and once that uh, script is run by cron you get a uh, add user uh, your user is added so you can backdoor that device or as it a triple seven and having sh type so you can you can execute it yourself right so this kind of interesting stuff you can look what are the shell script files are there you can look up for the email addresses uh, we are taking this in little deeper manner in tomorrow's training so these are the uh, crucial part of firmware you should look for now uh, here in document root you may ended up uh, source code review for web application completely and in application binary itself also you can review a uh, source code review of the application binary to execute a command from a web interface now getting hands dirty first thing is like obvious uh, you are running a port scan so once i uh, once i you remember we conducted a documentary where we found a default credential is admin now i ran a port scan on this one fine device uh, one fine ip phone it was an ip phone 
and I found that Telnet was open. And simply connecting to Telnet and running admin admin, I got this. Here you can see UID 0, JID 0. We got a root over this device just by typing admin admin. <laughs> now we see that AT and 443 is running also as we know that web server is running on document. I found this two new ports from port scan that 7547 is there and 53 is filter on the device. So generally this device don't have a capacity to host a DNS server. So they use a very fine utility called DNS farm. Almost in every device you find a DNS mask which is running on a port 53. That DNS mask itself as a, acts as a DHCP server also in device. And I found one new port that is called 75474. So after studying a lot, I come to know that that is a CWM PC port which was doing a device management on 75474. And here you can see operating system is Linux kernel 2.6. Just Google about the Linux kernel 2.6 exploit. I believe you may find a 5 to 6 pages of CV details with the exploit available on the device. And here is a specific version 2.6.17 to 2.6.36. So you may find more cr critical vulnerability and now you have a deeper angle and you have deeper aspects. So all you need is to look into 17 to uh, 18 uh, exploits like 18 versions and exploit for that 18 version of it. So you may uh, do, you may use it for a remote code execution if exploit is supporting RC or you may end up with a privilege escalation vulnerability. Now, obviously, uh, as we seen in a port scan, the device is running a uh, web server. I connected to that device and found this index.asp. I entered username and password. Here you can see username is traveling and password is traveling, but what? I am think something is missing here. So what is missing? That missing part is nothing but a X frame option header. Now you are thinking why I am making a critical issue. Why am I marking this as a critical issue? I'll tell you in a next slide, next few slides. But keep in mind that we have no X frame option here. So that means these devices are vulnerable for click jacking vulnerability. Okay. Then after uh, further accessing or after further obtaining a uh, few from this uh, device, I got to this one request that this one request could manage a complete device. So I can with this one request, I can manipulate every parameter of the device. Here you can see user type is admin, user name is admin, admin password is admin, uh, then DBID LCD language is zero, management use VPN zero, remote web login is one. That means remote web login is enabled or disabled. Okay. Uh, so you can change it also as you have a in one request only. Wireless access zero, LAN port is 80, uh, DBID web port is 80, DBID web SSL port is 443. Uh, and remote web remote legal IP is everything. So every remote web is legal IP. Then remote telnet is one. Telnet security code and telnet uh, local telnet is one. Telnet port is twenty three. Telnet remote legal IP is zero dot zero dot zero dot zero. So anything a, a any fuck any uh, <coughs> any characters anyone can connect to device over a telnet as this device is listening on 0.0.0.0 and host name was there radius access is there uh, ip phone is log enable device management so as you can see here everything is controlled in just one request okay and can you notice something here so this is an interactive session generally uh, I'll tell you there is a no uniqueness in this request as you can see apart from this cookies there is no uniqueness so that means this device is vulnerable for request forgery also now we have a click jacking vulnerabilities and request forgery vulnerabilities so we can do a cross site request forgery to this device now let's look at last part here these devices have some uh, one page called diagnostic 
to perform this kind of operation like to ping the device or to uh, see whether the device is properly configured in a network so like you can't do just ssh to the device and ping for uh, ping for the device so these guys generally give such kind of option in web ui and here you can see here was a ping option i just put a id command in backtick and it returns me id so basically we have a remote code execution vulnerabilities or say code execution vulnerabilities on the device now we have a click jacking we have a cross site request forgery and we have a code execution now if you put some logic that this is an ip phone it is connected to the laptop now laptop is directly connected to ip phone in most of the company wherever you see ip phone network and laptop network are same generally ip phone itself gives ip, uh, IP to uh, using that cable to laptop so that means your laptop is reachable to ip phone now let's make some fancy page uh, of to retain to retain this organization employment you have to agree to policy means to continue with employment you have to agree those policies if you don't want to uh, if you want to get terminated you you can or in case you want to leave the organization you can click on i disagree now add a click jacking uh, using click jacking make a request to the ip phone with the default credential it works most of the time and uh, instead of that id parameter change that value with a curl facebook.com or uh, let's say uh, let's add a cron job <laughs> let's add a cron job using command execution vulnerability like for i in 1 is to 100 do curl hyphen ik https facebook.com or any any website for example dot com xyz dot com and once you uh, once this request is fired that bot is under your control or you can add a backdoor to the device and those will become your destructive bots isn't it easy this is how we can turn a simple ip phone into a bot that's all here is the poc which i had done on my laptop uh, and this is this was connected to a laptop uh, ip phone i just clicked on I, I agree and it executed id command this many times on the device using this simple web now what i need to use this i need to host this test poc to one server and all i need to do the send that server link to anyone and means to send that server link to users so that once users click on that link it will create a using click jacking it will create a request to device with and with the csrf and default credential and command execution it will authenticate and uh, executes the command okay so this was all getting hands dirty with iot now we will touch base upon a fuzzing reverse engineering and exploit development we have a complete one hour section in tomorrow's training uh, or in um, my tra training at day one of fuzzing on this fuzzing reverse engineering and exploit development in this brief due to lack of time uh, we are just touching base on them uh, so first thing is to get the shell before we start fuzzing uh, or debugging uh, we need to install the uh, debugging tool on the device so for that we need to get access to the root or we need uh, at least some shell to device for testing this second what are the ways to obtain this shell it's like one i show demonstrated just now with a web vulnerability instead of id command you can execute npm and lvp on uh, 4444 you will get a reverse uh, bind shell or reverse shell uh, bind shell to the device second is firmware analysis from in firmware analysis you may come up with a hard coded account backdoor account or you may come up with a way to execute a command uh, some binaries might be there which is listening silently and there is some clients to connect that device third is document review in document they mention that uh, in case of emergency you need to you need to connect on this port by this way or by pressing this button multiple times 
you may get a shell and last uh, default credential is always good and reverse engineering the binary default credential we used in earlier our telnet server and we exploiting web vulnerabilities also we use right now and lastly reverse engineering the binary so uh, this looks complicated earlier but when i start exploring this it is it is not uh, as complicated as it was so there was one fine admin panel i just put admin admin on it i intercepted this and i found this uh, these are the request username log off login time login time 0 and login value password wrong password password 2 is wrong password this is the input i typed here and uh, again there is a user password is wrong password so i saw multiple fields there as a password and i decided to first uh, make sure whenever you are passing a device you should pause each and every request you never know when when you got a surprise okay then i created this first list here uh, a two times a five times a 10 times a 20 times a 50 times a 100 times a 200 times a uh, and i loaded it into birth soul payload uh, payload and i fired this uh, into the now here you can see this is a missed part here you can see the responses is here but here it is missing again the uh, device started response so let's see what happened in a background here is a log of device what you can see here can you see something interesting here so the boa server was running here uh, on the then there is an extra body it got what it got six so a buffer overflow here a static buffer overflow dumping core in slash tmp now what again boa server started with uh, a different pid 1170 1169 and what here extra radial body again it got six up again dumping core in tmp now again it got crash again it started so someone might be wondering that if we are able to crash uh, if the device is getting crashed how this is how this binary is getting up it's because there are there are procmons kind of activities are running inside the device which will keep eyes on process like if the web interface is up or not if the sip interface is up or not if a lan interface is up or not so whenever we are crashing this with our payload as you can see here uh, here when we send a uh, 210 5000 is as a password uh, to the device device get crashed again we send it 20,000 10,000 a it is getting crashed again we send 20,000 it is getting crashed again with the 50,000 it is getting crash okay so uh, this is how we are getting crashes here so the first thing is once you got a uh, once you got a server you need to uh, you need to first all each and every request with each and every parameters you or uh, you may get a surprise anytime so this is a first thing with http section we are doing now now uh, you got a crash right but you have to identify at what level device is getting crash so here you may see when you are sending a 5000 a their device is getting crash so what you have to do now with the msf you have to generate a payload of 5000 and you have to copy that payload into a request and you have to send that payload to identify those offsets uh, at way at which uh, at which point device is getting crashed to develop a successful exploit now how you can achieve it so first thing is uh, as you have a root shell first thing is to grip for the process id which process is running now uh, you have to install the gdb server we are taking this in deeper manner that how we are going to install a gdb in uh, training and you have to attach the process here uh, with uh, gdb now gdb is listening to this process and then you have to connect uh, gdb uh, gdb means uh, we need a gdb multi architecture here to connect this and once you connect it to gdb you have to regenerate the crash as the device is crash you can see here the registers from gdb uh, it's a pawn gdb i used to use as you here you can see from register s0 to s3 these four registers are in our control then here you can see a 
T4 register and T7 register are in our control and also we have a control over return address. So once we got this much of access, now you know what to do, right? Just get a dirty shell code or reverse shell or bind shell and fire it. And once you fire it, you will get the device. So this is the owning the device. So here is an exploit which a simple exploit I developed here uh, for this IP phone only. Uh, here you can see username is buffer overflow and the password is equal to a into 999 times. Uh, this is the padding till T4 then first register comes is T4. Uh, then uh, again we have a T7 here. Uh, then T6 and here you can see S0 register, S1 register, S2 and S3 register. Right. So all you need to do is you have to host this register here in S0 to S4 and then you have to uh, uh, give some padding here again till return address and uh, some padding and then you have to call the return address. And by this way you can own the device without any interaction just by knowing the IP address. All you need is IP address once you perform an extensive research to this. So as I am available with you from long time at this sort, still you have a question, you can mail me at kingkosovatme.com and uh, you can uh, follow me at Twitter at Security. Thanks a lot. Hope you like this talk and hope we I can see you again tomorrow uh, again for tomorrow's training.